I want to ask you, how do you see uh, the digital utility in the next five to ten years in Africa? Uh, look, Ashley, um, uh, you see, uh, the, the power business, and mostly in Africa, uh, it's very conventional. But uh, we are seeing a true, uh, like the dual metering and uh, even the, uh, the blockchain. So there are new uh, technologies that are bringing the uh, electricity and the power business in Africa to a more digital world. Uh, and I think that uh, the, um, uh, the industry can benefit from that uh, uh, and that make a difference and also to make viable some other, uh, more indoor, also in the off-grid space, on the mini-grids and the, uh, in the, on the, the home systems. Uh, so like connected with the, the, the mobile money and mobile phones. Uh, we are seeing a lot of action and actually a lot of traction on that side, uh, on that market. Uh, some companies already getting some very strong business cases and getting real money and real funds, funding on that. Um, and uh, I think it's very exciting uh, and uh, we will see a lot of progress and, uh, and also eventually some consolidation on that uh, and more startups coming on. And what do you see as being one of the biggest challenges for a utility who is moving towards the digital space? Uh, yeah, I think you see what eventually one of, of the challenges would be the bankability and the way because also the money is very conventional on the approach uh, they do to the projects and about new technologies and being like before the technology is being it's proved uh, uh, that is viable and can work in the uh, and it's sustainable in the long run. Uh, I think that uh, is a challenge that because the technology is there, uh, but uh, the uh, the sponsors of the, those technologies uh, will have to prove with pilots and we have to prove that they can scale up the, their projects to uh, a size that is uh, that makes sense for the for the continent as well. And Remy, uh, let's just jump back to the renewables uh, sector and looking at climate change and its very real impact um, on these technologies. How do you see hydropower? Um, what do you think the future is for hydropower in Africa? Uh, I would say that till now we have seen the big hydros. Uh, the big hydros uh, require, uh, so they damage more the environment because they need uh, uh, normally big water reservoirs and they have a bigger impact. But uh, uh, I see a shift also to the mini hydros, smaller, where you can have uh, distributed power, so it's closer to the consumption, which uh, they also impact less, they have a better fit into the environment and also into the community. So I see a shift from the big hydro that are hard, uh, 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 that it's, it's harder now uh, to make them happen, to the mini hydros and, and the small that get closer to the communities, closer to the consumption points. Uh, uh, and I would say that uh, in the renewable sector, uh, the, the mini hydros have a lot of political support from the from the governments and from the countries to develop. And uh, even if we see that other renewables like solar and wind take a lot of time, the pipeline is huge, but you don't see much action on the ground. Uh, we see that the mini hydros they progress faster and uh, they happen uh, at, a, uh, at, a, at at a faster pace uh, here in Africa. And if we look at the collaboration between public and private partnerships. How important do you think that the unbundling of the energy sector is in Africa? Uh yeah, so th that is a, that is a good question, and uh, and it makes sense. You, we see that, for example, there are countries that where the, the the power sector is already unbundled into generation, transmission, and distribution. Some other countries are not there yet. It depends also on the maturity and uh, how big and uh, how, then how, how sustainable the, that unbundling of the the power sector uh, uh, becomes. But uh, when you bring in uh, the power, the, the private sector to the to, to the power market. Uh, I, I think it helps the unbundling. It helps the private sector to jump in. Uh, we see uh, that well, at least we have seen that the private sector has a lot of appetite for generation. Uh, it's not that easy to bring the private sector to the distribution and to the transmission. Uh, but I also see that there is a lot of effort and uh, a lot of uh, support from the financial institutions to try to come up with uh, with models, financial models 
that can accommodate uh, and can help the private sector to jump in also to transmission and distribution. So uh, I think we'll see also prog progress on that with the support of the financiers. Uh, and uh, I think we also need some case studies to happen uh, that uh, then that model that uh, the, the market managed uh, to to make viable on those case studies to be replicated in other countries and in, the, in, and in other projects. And lastly, there's a lot of controversy and conversation around fossil fuels and renewables. And with uh, science telling us and research that by 2050, we're going to have an extra 2 billion people on the planet. What energy mix do you see globally? Uh, yeah, you see, uh, uh, so maybe, maybe my opinion on that uh, doesn't follow the trend. Uh, I think in Africa, there is room for everything. Uh, I think is from one side, it's not fair uh, that the developed world uh, kind of put limitations on Africa in terms of emissions on that, where there is not much, well, most of the emissions are coming from the developed world uh, and from the the, con the the continents that are more industrialized. Uh, and uh, I think Africa should do, uh, uh, just do their path on, on, the, on, on the power side and taking advantage of the resource that they have on the ground. So, uh, okay, I see that uh, there is, it's, it's more trendy, the renewables, but uh, I wouldn't uh, just reject the fossil fuel just because it's an imposition from whoever uh, in Africa. Uh, uh, if the resources are there, I think in, in a, a wise way, they should be used and explored for the development of the people, of the countries and the continent as a whole. Well. And mostly, we, because what we need is industrialization in Africa so that we also increase the income of the people so that they can use the power uh, on a meaningful way and then make use of, of the power. And for that, I think a balance of fossil and renewables, it still makes sense in Africa. Uh, and that is my personal uh, opinion on that. Thank you. Thank you so much, George. Thank you, Ashley. And thank you. Thank you.